Bro, look at him. <laughs> I don't apex. Apex. <laughs> <laughs> This should be our first word. <laughs> okay, let's start. Today we'll speak about uh, Data Safe. Um, Oracle Data Safe is a fully integrated cloud service focused on the security of um, your data. It's really an amazing uh, service. It provides a complete set of features for protecting, uh, protecting sensitive and um, regulative data in uh, Oracle, um, Oracle Cloud uh, databases. Cool. Hey, George. Um, so, can you give us some examples about uh, the target databases to be monitored by DataSafe? Then, yes, sure, Bilek. Um, you can, um, yes, you can connect the autonomous data warehouse, the server edition, and autonomous transaction processing database. Uh, you can have a bare metal database system, VM, DB systems, and exadata uh, using. Um, either public or private endpoints. All these versions are currently on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Uh, there's also a limited availability for on-premises Oracle database at the moment, but we'll have uh, more uh, news in the future. Um, and you, you mentioned several data sources, several database targets, um, and you mentioned also private and public endpoints. Can you please explain what's, what's the difference? Um, yes, sure, Alex. Um, you can connect to the DataSafe um, uh, service uh, using a public IP, internet, but also you can have your database in a private subnet using private IPs and connect with DataSafe without using and share your uh, data traffic uh, via internet. Uh, so uh, we have both options for uh, our customers. George, can you tell us what are the steps that we should follow to connect the target databases? Yes, um, sure, Zola. Um, let's um, see first of all how easy it is to connect an autonomous database from the autonomous uh, dashboard. For this, um, let's see, I have a, uh, one, uh, I have provisioned one uh, autonomous database here. And um, when I click uh, on it, um, I can see the old settings of autonomous database. So uh, we'll see this. Uh, part here, there is a data safe option. And if I just uh, register, press the register button, then I can register this database. Uh, this process will um, will be completed in just one minute. But uh, I have already uh, registered another uh, autonomous for these purposes here. And uh, when this is when this uh, is already when this database is already registered, we can just press this link, this view console, and um, see the service dashboard. Um, and um, in case we have, for example, other targets, we just uh, select these targets, uh, these targets here, and uh, we can register more. We can see a list of all targets that we have already. Uh, register here or register a new one just pressing the register button here and uh, fill all these uh, fields it's only three four five uh, fields that we need to uh, select the resource group the OCID uh, etc and then we just uh, register the targets that looks really easy uh, George uh, you mentioned uh, some features in your introduction but could you please show us some uh, features that uh, Oracle data save includes uh, in the dashboard? Uh, yes, Theo. Um, the, the amazing part is that um, we have all these, uh, all these tools in order to uh, proceed with uh, security assessment, user assessment, data discovery, data masking, activity auditing. All these are um, available in just one dashboard. And the, real, the really cool thing is that um, I can have a dashboard um, depicting the assessments um, or the discovery that I have done already done in um, the targets I have chosen. For example, I have previously done a security assessment for the for my targets, and uh, I can see that there are seven risks here. If I just drill down, press this uh, this dashboard, I can see more details about uh, these services. Uh, 
about the services here. Uh, the same applies for user assessment, data discovery. I can see the all activities, events that have been produced uh, from my audit, audit trails uh, records. Uh, the admin activities, open alerts. Uh, we mentioned before that uh, for every uh, actions uh, that uh, have been applied in the policy, audit policy, then there are created some alerts here. So I can see all of them in the dashboard. And of course, some operational um, operational information I can see, like which feature we use, the jobs that have been completed or they're running, and all the trails that have been applied in this uh, service. Yeah, and also uh, just to, uh, uh, to add that uh, you can have all these uh, reports and alerts and jobs uh, in these tabs here in order to have a better monitor of the service. Is there any uh, filter that we can apply? And can you show us how to generate audit reports? Yes, of course. Um, yeah. Um, when I, I have I already um, completed the process of the audit trail um, uh, collect, collection, then uh, we can create these uh, summaries. For example, if I had to choose um, all activity uh, summary of uh, my database, then I can see that there are all these uh, actions um, done in my database. Um, and I can have different information like the target, the database user, uh, client host, uh, etc. what kind of activities they have been already done and uh, when. Um, if I want to filter this uh, information, for example, I want to see only the, only the actions that have been done uh, from the OS uh, user Gmangina, for example. Uh, then I apply this filter here and I see only the actions from the client host Gmangina. Uh, I can see that there are some logon create tables, etc. And then if I want to create a record, I just press this uh, generate report here and I can choose um, one of these two uh, formats, PDF or XLS, and uh, just the uh, days that I have been to uh, to include in my report, the resource uh, group, and then I generate this uh, report. It will take less than uh, uh, one minute to uh, generate the report. And uh, yeah, we see that's already uh, generated. Hey George, um, you mentioned something interesting, the feature called um, data discovery in the, in the previous tab there. So, how do you discover sensitive data using this tool? Can you show us an example? Uh, yes, thanks, uh, Bilek, uh, for this question. It is, um, as you said, it's very uh, easy to do this process. Uh, from the main dashboard, we just choose the um, data discovery. And uh, we follow this uh, simple process here. Uh, at the beginning, we just select the target for sensitive data discovery. In our case, uh, we'll use this ATP data safe. Um, and um, then uh, we'll press uh, continue. And um, here we can uh, create uh, the sensitive data model. Uh, uh, use the resource uh, group, the R compartment, uh, create a name for this and uh, press continue. Then we have to select the schemas for sensitive data discovery that we want to apply. Uh, let's do this in the admin uh, schema. Um, and then uh, we'll have a, a list of all these uh, sensitive data types that data types that will be um, uh, used in the this discovery. Um, we see that there are some uh, types regarding the identification information, biographic, uh, employment information. Even we can create our custom. Let's, uh, for example, see some biographic information. Um, it uses address, family data, family data, and uh, if we'll see more in details, we'll see that uh, this service uh, is searching about full address, mail, uh, <clears throat> street, city, country, etc. Uh, in our uh, custom types, we have, for example, this Mongolian national ID or custom uh, Facebook ID. For our purposes, we'll continue with biographic information, and uh, we'll select continue and uh, this um, this discovery is uh, very quickly we'll see that it con it, com it was completed in less than 10 seconds and um, when 
we'll continue this discovery, we'll see that uh, the results are that regarding this biographic information, the process discovered uh, these three uh, these three groups of uh, data, the address, uh, family data and restricted processing data. Um, regarding the street, there are two uh, columns under the admin schema and customers table or customers two tables that there are that they include uh, sensitive data. And in case of the second uh, table, there are 111,000 um, uh, records. Um, the same um, applies in other uh, other types, data types. So we can um, create the report and then we'll see how many sensitive tables, columns and types there are um, in my discovery and how many sensitive values there are from my discovery also in my database. This is a great, great uh, uh, tool um, and it can help a lot for this uh, discovery, especially if you have many schemas and tables in your database. Nice, nice. Um, I was going to ask if I can, if I'm able to uh, create own sensitive types. You showed it, it is possible, it's good. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, George, how can I mask my data then? What's the process? Okay, let's see how, how easy it is uh, to do it. Um, from this uh, tab, this data masking tab, we just select our uh, target. In, the, in our case, it will be again the ATP uh, data safe uh, target. And then um, we continue. Um, we uh, select our uh, masking policy. Uh, we'll create a new one. And uh, from resource group, uh, we'll select our compartment, uh, the data safe demo. Um, We'll press continue and uh, we'll again um, do the uh, sensitive data discovery. If we want, we can uh, use the previous one. Just do again, new one. And uh, from my uh, schemas, I will select the admin one and we'll press continue. And uh, let's uh, do again the sensitive data discovery for biographic um, information. Uh, let's press continue and the discovery job uh, is running. Uh, it was very quick, just uh, finished. Uh, we press again uh, continue in order to uh, see the results. Uh, so we see the estimated data count and the types. We save and uh, continue in order to define the masking policy that we want to apply. And in our case, um, we'll use uh, Let's see, ah, we'll mask the postal code numbers. Uh, we will uh, use this uh, function, the fixed number. And let's put, for example, four, uh, four ones for this fixed number, for these tables. Okay, we save it and uh, we press confirm policy. We can have uh, different functions and different um, in uh, each uh, data type that we want to apply. And um, in the next uh, step, we schedule the masking job. We can do it right now or we can do it uh, later. Let's do it now. Uh, we have a final review, um, what will be done, in which target, etc., and just we submit the policy. Um, the masking uh, the masking job is uh, running now. It usually takes uh, less than uh, one minute for this uh, uh, number of uh, these uh, numbers, and uh, we can uh, press the report in order to uh, see um, how many tables uh, they were masked and. Um, how many values, the types, different types that there were. So uh, we can check with our uh, SQL developer. Uh, we can just um, uh, select the data from our customers, uh, uh, our customer uh, table, and we can see in the column customer postal code that uh, all data are masked um, and we have inserted uh, four uh, ones in its field. Uh, hey George, uh, I think hey, the, 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 the tool is the service is really cool. Can can a customer use this 
uh, for GDPR requirements? Uh, uh, it can uh, can it help? Yes, yes, sir, Fatih. Thank you for this uh, question. Um, yes, of course. Uh, when we um, when we proceed with the security assessment of our uh, database, um, and we can uh, we can see the reports that they are created. So DataSafe uh, generate a report for us, and um, in summary, uh, there are different categories that sex, for example, user accounts, privileged roles, encryption, database configuration, etc. And um, there are some, uh, for example, let's see for encryption. Uh, DataSafe uh, have some reference uh, regarding the EU GDPR and the uh, STIG uh, standards and um, identify how many um, unencrypted table space or tables you have in your database. Uh, for example, in our case, uh, we have some uh, some uh, unencrypted, unencrypted uh, table space here. And so um, it gives us also some remarks how to um, how to do some actions in order to be compliant with the GDPR and the STIG or CIS uh, security standards. And um, all these are regarding these uh, controls, uh, privileges and users, uh, user accounts, and uh, really help us to uh, be compliant with GDPR. Of course, uh, we have a completely uh, um, guide for GDPR compliance as Oracle. And um, if uh, you, if someone read this, read it, this uh, will understand that most of these tools are included in DataSafe. So it is a great tool for uh, these assessments, CTPR assessments. Uh, indeed, indeed, it looks like uh, it has really useful features. And and uh, can you can you just summarize the real benefits use, of using these features? Uh, for the customer. I, I mean, who do you think uh, should use this tool and how can they benefit from this one? Yeah, uh, yes, Fatih, this is, uh, that's uh, that's great, yeah. Uh, the DataSafe helps customers with their uh, various uh, compliance requirements, such as uh, identifying uh, where sensitive data is uh, located. Uh, the masking, masking data safe, uh, sensitive uh, data for non-production use, uh, securely capturing audit, da audit data, and so forth and so on. Um, so, uh, yes, um, a client, a customer who wants to uh, perform this uh, GDPR uh, or other industry um, related uh, compliance assessments uh, can be a benefit from this tool. George, yeah. can I ask you the last thing uh, before you close? Uh, we saw that before you submit your uh, uh, masking job there, it was with big letters, big red letters that uh, make sure it's not on a production database. What are the general recommendations as regards the use of this tool uh, with production databases? Maybe there are other aspects that you can use in production database and does this come with any performance penalty in this case? Uh, yeah, yeah. thanks Theo for this question. Um, usually we recommend to uh, perform any data masking activities, processes, uh, not in production environment, but in staging environments. So you can copy your data from the uh, production environment to a staging one and perform all masking activities there. But uh, you can also uh, use uh, the, the other um, activities like the security assessments, your production database. Um, you can you can specify the audit policies that uh, will be applied in this uh, database. So be very uh, precise, uh, specific in order which policy will you will you will use in order to avoid any uh, performance degradation. So uh, usually there is no performance degradation as you asked about, but uh, uh, be sure that uh, you will uh, enable the audit policy that you want because if you use, for example, production database with uh, thousands of users and you enable all audit policies, then uh, you may uh, face any performance degradation there. Okay, thanks, George. It was a really nice demo. Thanks, guys. Thank you, George. Very well done. Thanks, great guys. Great presentation. Have a Thank great day. Thank you, George. It was really insightful. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Bye.